What is up YouTube? This is T Quentin One coming at you with another video. And today I'm going to talk to you about my top five favorite movies of 2016. Now this year was definitely not the best, especially compared to last year, but there were a few diamonds in the rough. Before I start the list though, I do have one honorable mention and that is the nice guys. One thing that this year was especially sparse on was good comedies. In between Adam Sandler's latest atrocity and, oh look, a cartoon character saying, fuck, isn't that hilarious? The Nice Guys, while still pretty vulgar, had a wit to it that was sorely missing from these others. On top of that, the cast was great, with Gosling in particular standing out, but Angry Rice was pretty good too, and even Russell Crowe was pretty good. To be honest, the only reason it doesn't quite make the list is the second act drags on a bit. Other than that, I definitely recommend it, and judging by its box office, most of you probably haven't seen it, so yeah, check it out. Now on to my actual list, starting with number 5, and that's Finding Dory. Pixar has been on the upswing lately after the fantastic Inside Out last year, and they pumped out another great film this year. By all outward appearances, this should have been such a phoned-in cash grab, but it wasn't. When a sequel comes out 13 years later, the last words anyone expects to describe it best is necessary, but it really did seem like the next chapter had moved the story to a very natural place. There were lots of great new characters, and the few that returned did a really good job as well. Finding Dory is heartfelt, it's colorful, it's fun, and I really enjoyed it. Number 4, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Moving to the complete opposite side of the spectrum, here we have a really tense, uncomfortable thriller, bolstered by three of the best performances I saw in 2016. This is one of those movies that I liked more the second time I watched it, and even more than that the third time. It really grew on me. Its writing was really well done, and it built up tension masterfully. Doubly impressive, considering this is a first-time director. It felt almost like one of the better Twilight Zone episodes, and you know how much of a fan I am of that kind of stuff. On top of that, there were several twists and turns that, despite not exactly being an action-packed movie, kept me on the edge of my seat. As I said, though, the acting stole the show here. All three of these actors were amazing. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Gallagher Jr. felt so natural and real, while John Goodman just scared the crap out of me. Seriously, do not let this movie slip. Watch it as soon as you can. Number three, Captain America Civil War. Now that is how you make a superhero movie. Everything I wanted from Dawn of Justice, I got from Civil War. Except a good DC movie. The Russo brothers are proving themselves to be the Marvel equivalent to Christopher Nolan. The characters were so fleshed out. And here we have an ensemble movie about two opposing groups. And I liked every single character on both teams. That is a hell of a feat, let me tell you. Uh, the acting is just great, uh, and the film tackled some real-world issues that Donna Justice tried to do, but the approach here felt more mature. On top of that, the action scenes are just jaw-dropping. Some of the best in a superhero movie since the Dark Knight trilogy. There really is something for everyone in this movie, I think. Uh, this is definitely one for the ages. It was fantastic. Number two, Kubo and the Two Strings. I grew up on fantasy movies like Labyrinth and The NeverEnding Story, and I've never really found something in recent years to scratch that itch. Until Kubo. Kubo was unlike any other movie I saw in 2016. Its world was interesting and had lovable characters, and it handled themes of loss and family in a much more adult way than I was expecting. Laika has had a good track record with fun little quirky movies, but this is the first time I've walked away from one of their films thinking that was an experience. As I said in my review, I've also never seen an animated film with action scenes this good. They're jaw-dropping. Despite some of the dialogue feeling a bit clunky, Kubo just got so much right that it's hard for me to fault it on that. I cannot wait to see where the studio goes from here, as I think they prove with this film that they are worthy to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with all the animation giants. It's great. And number one, probably will not surprise anybody that knows my videos, is Zootopia. Zootopia struck a chord with me more than any other movie I saw this year. I think the main reason that I loved this film so much was because of how it executed one of the most used archetypes in movie history, the unlikely friendship. Uh, but there's a reason so many films try this, and that's because when it's pulled off, it is by far and away the most heartwarming thing one can see unfold. Now, on a technical level, yes, Zootopia is great, but that bond between these two main characters was so touching. And while no, Zootopia did not make me cry, it did something more. It made me care. There's a reason this film crossed a billion at the box office, and I think that's because most people, like me, got so invested in the main two characters that they just wanted to see it again and again. 
what else can I say? I love this movie. Well, that was my list. Uh, stay tuned next time when I talk about my most anticipated films of next year. It's T. Quentin 1, signing out.